السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بارك الله فيكم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على النبي الأمي برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين After we discussed Hashim we now discuss his son who was named Shayba Shayba to Alhamd على شيبة الحمد الذي كان وجهه يضيء ظلام الليل كالقمر البدري Zalqani quotes an amazing poem describing and praising Shayba to Alhamd and the beauty of Shayba like the luminance of the full moon Shayba to Alhamd's face brightens the darkness of the night he was known for his beauty generosity his hospitality even went beyond humankind to actually embrace even the birds and the beasts. He was known by a famous title, Fayyad, the very generous, and Mut'imu At-Tayr fi sama one who even wanted to provide for this, the, the birds also. He was born in al madinatul Munawwara because his mother was by her family, the Khazraj clan. Some historians mention him or the reason for naming him Shayba was some grey hair that he was born with. Anyway, from his childhood, he was known as Sheba. And then he grew up in Medina Munawwara. And his father had passed on in Gaza. Allah. And as he grew, his uncle, Al-Muttalib, Al-Muttalib, traveled to Medina Munawwara looking for his brother's son. Hashim was the ruler. Of Makkah Mukarrabah. Hashim had passed on. So Hashim's brother Muttalib came looking for his nephew, his brother's son. And as he identified this boy, he sought the permission of the mother. The mother was at first reluctant. But the uncle explained the position and the status of this boy. And Alhamdulillah, he took Sheba. And how was he known by the famous name? As he entered Makkah, some felt, because obviously his childhood... He was orphaned and somewhat neglected. So some thought, oh, did Muttalib purchase a slave? So some started commenting, oh, Abdul Muttalib. So he's clarifying it that this is not my slave, but this is my brother's son. But anyway, he was then famously known as Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib was then the leader of Makkah Makarrama, known for his generosity, beauty, ex- uh, extreme hospitality, Known by the title Fayyad, Mut'imu Tayr fi Sama, he even made alcohol prohibited upon himself. He paid special attention to even feeding the destitute in the holy month of Ramadan. Some say he even at times went into seclusion in the cave of Hira. He advocated good qualities. He prohibited bad traits and ways. <clears throat> but a very pertinent point to remember when discussing Abdul Muttalib is the fact that Zamzam was the water, the Mubarak water. Gifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via Hazrat Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. At this time it was history. It was just an incident and a narrative. But there was no Zamzam available. What happened to the Zamzam well? As we mentioned previously, when the Jurhum tribe came to Makkah al-Mukarrama and they sought permission of Hazrat Hajar and Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam to stay in Makkah Mukarrama, And they lived there and they stayed there. And Hazrat Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, the custodian of the Kaaba Sharif, who lived for approximately 130 years. When he passed on, he was buried not far from his mother by the Hatim area. His bequeath and wasiya was that the custodianship of the Kaaba Sharif will be the responsibility of his son Qaydar. And then that continued. But as time progressed, there was hostilities between the offspring of Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam and the Banu, Banu Jurhum clan. The latter, meaning Banu Jurhum, prevailed and conquered and Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam's offspring had to leave Makkah Mukarrama and the Jurhum then established their rule over this region. As time went on, their ways became very tyrannical and immoral and they were violating this, the sanctuary of the Baytullah and all the other Arab tribes got together and conquered Jurhum, the Jurhum clan. And then they were forced to depart from Makkah. But as they were departing from Makkah Mukarrama, they secreted a number of relics, the relics of the Kaaba, into the Zamzam well and they buried the Zamzam well without any sign of, of it. As time went on, there was no sign of the Zamzam well. 
but it was just an incident that this was the water of our father Hazrat Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. There's a, a Sahih report in the books of history that Abdul Muttalib mentioned, and this is narrated via Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. Abdul Muttalib said, I was asleep in the Hijr when I saw this vision. Where someone in my sleep comes to me and says to me, this report mentions that I was told, dig Tayba. So I asked, what is that? And then he went away. The next day, I was resting and this person came and said, dig Barra. Barra from the word Bir, which is righteousness, the righteous. So I asked, what is righteousness? What is the righteous? And he then departed. The next day when I went to rest, he comes and says, Uhfur al madnuna, dig the hidden, that hidden valuable commodity. So I asked, what is that? He then departed. The next time I go to rest, he then comes to me on the fourth day and orders me, go and dig zamzam, uhfur zamzam. One report says he actually asked at that time. And then I was told, it is the well whose water never dries, nor does it decrease in volume. It provides countless amounts of water for the pilgrims, for the hujjaj to drink. It quenches all the great hujjaj and it lies between the dung and the blood. Near, near the digging of the black and white crow, not far from the anthill. In the Nukratil Ghurabil Aatham, in the Qaryatil Naml. As he was performing tawaf, he sees, oh, there's dung and blood at a certain place. They had just slaughtered a camel. And not far from there, he sees the anthill. And then he realizes the exact place and situation, location was described to him. And he now starts digging. He had none to help him but his son, Al Harith, who's the son of Abdul Muttalib. Some others tried to halt him and stop him. But he says, but how can you stop me? I mean, Abdul Muttalib was the chief, was the commander, the leader of Makkah Mukarrama. Anyway, himself and his son dug, hoisting his pick and his shovel. He kept on digging at that designated spot. And Allahu Akbar, he, made the, he, he kept on digging until he reached the, the well. But it's reported that while he was digging and there was none to help him, he made a vow. That, O oh Allah, if you grant me ten sons, I would sacrifice one for you indeed. And when he reaches the edge of the well, he says, Kabbar, Allahu Akbar. The Quraysh realize that he reached his objective. And they all come and say, Abdul Muttalib, oh, you found the well of our father, Hazrat Ismail, alayhi salam. It's also our haq. And we are all partners in this. He says, Remember something, Allah has blessed me with this well. I'm not going to stop you from using this well, but Allah has chosen me for this well. قَدْ خُصِّصْتُ بِهِ دُونَكُمْ And I have been granted this well. So they said, no, it belongs to everyone. And then there's an interesting report where they wanted to seek the arbitration of a famous fortune teller from the Banu Sa'ad, from a Hudaym clan, Hudaym clan. And this is what they would do in Jahiliya. So anyway, they carried on. And finally, en route to get to this place, they get to know <clears throat> that en route they got actually desert, deserted in a desert and they were lost. And now there was no hope. And they looked without any hope of salvation or coming out of this uh, situation. One actually commented that actually we should be digging our own graves because we're going to die here. And as one dies... The other should bury him and like that, that's better than all of, one being out of the ground is better than all of us being out of, out of the ground, devoured by the vultures and the creatures. Until Abdul Muttalib said, why don't we exert ourselves and use our strength to find water and get our way out? Wallahi inna ilqa'ana bi'aydina hakadha lil mawt, la nadribu fil ard, wa la nabtaghi li anfusina la ajz. By Allah, us just giving up like that, letting ourselves die without trying and exerting ourselves to find water and find a solution. Isn't that weakness indeed? Allah will open our way. Somewhere Allah will give us water. Come. And as they get up and Abdul Muttalib gets up, from beneath the conveyance of Abdul Muttalib gushes forth a spring of sweet water. Abdul Muttalib again recites the takbir and everyone in astonishment recites the takbir and then he drinks and they all drink and then 
Subhanallah, they all realize that you know what? Abdul Muttalib is the blessed one and Allah has chosen him. And they said, we don't want to take this matter to, for any arbitration. We'll never fight with you concerning this issue. Allah has indeed chosen you and so forth. And when they would use the, 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 the Zamzam water, he would always uh, tell them, Wallahi, Allahumma inni la uhilluha li mukhtasilin, walakin hiya li sharibin hillun. Oh Allah, I do not render the water of Zamzam halal for anyone to bath with. So he wouldn't allow anyone to bath with the water of Zamzam out of respect for this water. And then he would say it is only permitted for drinking purposes, out of respect and adab for the Zamzam water. And subhanAllah, how amazing is this ma'u Zamzam in Dar Qutni, in Hakim, Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhumah's report. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ma'u Zamzam lima shuriba lahu. The water of Zamzam is such that whatever you drink it, for and whichever intention you make on drinking it, it is granted. In the report of Abdullah bin Abbas, Nabi said, If you drink it for cure, bihi Allah will cure you. If you drink it for, uh, for, 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 for quenching your thirst, Allah will quench you. You drink it for, due to hunger, Allah will remove that hunger. It, meaning, whatever dua one makes. And it was the strike of Hazrat Jibreel. And it was Allah quenching Hazrat Ismail alayhi musalawatu min Allahi with taslimat. Hazrat Abu Dhar Ghifari's report, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Innaha mubaraka, it is indeed blessed. It is food for anyone to, to, to eat, meaning it takes the place of food. And it is also drink and so forth. Subhanallah. The amazing dua of Abdullah bin Abbas when drinking Zamzam, subhanallah, for ilm and for shifa and for rizq and so forth. اللهم ارزقنا علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وعملا متقبلا وشفاء من كل داء امين يا رب العالمين سبحان الله years later Abdul Muttalib then sees another vision now Allah had blessed him with all his sons ten sons six daughters among his children were Hazrat Abbas Hamza Abdullah Abu Talib Zubair Harith Hijl Muqawwim Dirar Abu Lahab whose name was Abdul Uzza those were his sons. And then there was daughters, Safiya, Ummu Hakim, Bayda, Atika, Umayma, Arwa, Barra. And when he had all these children, ten sons, he then sees this vision that fulfill your vow. And he remembers his vow. And he now has to sacrifice one son for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as he casted lots, Abdullah was his favorite. But Abdullah's name comes out. Not that it's easy to slaughter and sacrifice any son. But Abdullah's name came out that was even harder. And now he's adamant to sacrifice Abdullah. And now when he was about to do this, the entire Quraysh gathered and Abdullah's mother's family. And they said, Abdul Muttalib will never allow you. He insisted that this is a vow. It's a promise I made to the Lord. They said, we'll never allow this. If you're going to do this, it's going to be a tradition and will continue that people will then start sacrificing and slaughtering their sons. This is an impossibility. He says, what do I do? The matter was taken and it was then decided that to make the Lord happy, cast lots between Abdullah and 10 camels until you reach the amount of camels that will please the creator, and there you will slaughter that amount of camels. And he kept on casting lots. And each time the name of Abdullah would come out until it reached the amount of 100 camels. And then the, na- the side of the lot of the camels came out. And from there he sacrificed the 100 camels and fed everyone. And he was a very generous person. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Abdullah. That's why when Rasulullah sallallahu was described and addressed, Yabna Dhabihain, O oh, the son of the two sacrificed ones, meaning the two forefathers of yours who were to be sacrificed. It refers to none other than firstly Hazrat Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, whose incident we know and is enshrined in the Quran Kareem, and the other is that of Abdullah the father, the blessed father of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So really Allah has chosen the lineage and the family of Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's clear he mentioned in the hadith of Sahih Muslim from Hazrat Wathila bin Asqa' radiallahu anhu. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in Allah Ta'ala istafa min wuldi Ibrahim Ismail alayhi wasalam. Allah selected from the children of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah selected Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam. And Allah selected from the offspring of Hazrat Ismail, Allah selected Kinana. And from Banu Kinana, Allah selected Quraysh. And from Quraysh, Allah selected Banu Hashim. And from the entire Banu Hashim, Allah selected me, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Clearly, in the report of Hazrat uh, of At-Tirmidhi, on one occasion, Hazrat Abbas, عنه, the uncle of Janabi Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was somewhat upset. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him why. He said, oh Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I heard some Bedouin tribes or some people equate you to be very special. That you come, you are equated to a date palm tree, but surrounded by a dump. What that meant is, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very great, but the family he hails from and the people he hails from have nothing special about them. They equated to a dump. And a beautiful date palm tree grows from something so despicable. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam climbed onto the member. And he asked the Sahaba Kiram, who am I? And they explained that you are the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then gave his lineage. And expressed to Sahaba Kiram radiallahu anhum. That yes, I am Allah's Nabi, the final Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the family from which I hail is very, very special. So this report in Tirmidhi is quite an interesting report showing that Rasulullah sallallahu has been chosen from the best of people. And we learn from here. Sometimes we have this tendency to express the people of Makkah or Quraysh and we highlight certain uh, evil practices that were prevalent among them. But when we analyze, a lot of people throughout the world had such degradation and such low morals throughout the world. If we look at people moral-wise, the people of Makkah had the best of morals. Chivalry, uh, generosity, honesty, integrity, loyalty. There were so many amazing qualities. They were people who would give their life for what they believed, for the, for the true cause. So, so the, the fact, the point that is made here is Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa comes also. He is the best of the best. And from whom Allah chose him were the best. And interesting is this verse of the Quran Kareem. Laqad ja'akum rasulum min anfusikum. Allah has sent you such a Nabi who is from you. Azizun alayhi ma'anittum. What hurts you is very hard for him to bear. Meaning he finds it hard to bear the difficulties of his ummah. When his ummah is suffering, his heart pains for them. Harisun alaykum. He yearns for goodness for you. He wants goodness for you. Bil mu'mineen ra'ufur rahim. And in treating the believers, he's compassionate and kind. This is one qira. The other rendition is, Allah has sent you such a nabi min anfusikum from amongst you. He's from, from the creation of Allah, from mankind. And also another rendition, min anfasikum sabse ziyada nafis. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the most precious and valuable of Allah's creation. Allah grant us the ability to love Him sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to emulate Him sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to advocate His message to the whole world sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Allah give us tawfiq to send abundance of salutations upon Him, and Allah subhanahu wa taala give us tawfiq to teach the whole world about Him. Wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam.